Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to set up Tailwind CSS with Next.js and SAS. Now, if you go to the Tailwind documentation, and Tailwind, by the way, is a utility for CSS, and you will see in a moment as to how useful this is because of its purging capability. So coming back to our installation, as you can see, it does have an option to use uh, an example template in case if you're starting a project from scratch. So we could very well have used this instead uh, of doing a manual setup. But because we are going to be installing SaaS and we have to do the SaaS configuration anyway, so I think I would prefer to do a manual setup rather than using a template which would have already installed it. But again, it would mi miss a few components because we need to add the configuration of SaaS, etc. Okay, so there are some uh, information available as to what you need to install, but um, I have already written a blog on that, so you can follow this. And uh, this is at coditech.com slash next.js tailwind with SaaS example. You can skip the installation of next.js because that's already done. So we'll start with this one. So I'm going to say npm install SaaS. So we're going to install SaaS first. Then we are going to install tailwind in post CSS. So let's do that. Okay, SaaS is installed. Now let's ensure to change the tailwind to at latest. So we have the latest version of that. And let's just install it quickly. Then let's create a config file for post CSS. So I'm going to go to my root directory and then create a post CSS config. So post css.config.js. So I pasted the config for you. And then we're also going to use a next.js config. So next.js only has a configuration by default. Uh, however, if you want to extend it, like add the SaaS option, then you'll need to extend it by creating a file to overwrite some of its uh, default configs. So what I'm gonna do is say nextjs.config.js, and then I'm going to copy this again and paste it here. This is basically has a bunch of configuration that I've added. One is trailing slash. Uh, for SEO purposes, some of the SEO experts would say to you that uh, it's better to use a trailing slash at the end of each URL. In which case, if you want to do that, you can just set this to true. I'm leaving this option open to you so you can choose what you like. Uh, this is just a webpack dev middleware to watch the config. And in case if it times out, the request times out uh, for more than 300 milliseconds and then we're returning the config and we have the size options and we're including the path and then it'll be under the styles directory. So what we're going to do is we'll create a directory called source and inside of which we'll create a directory called components which is our which is where our, all our components will stay and then I'm also going to create a directory called styles we want to create a directory called styles and instead of styles we'll say index.scss this is where our index file will stay and then i'm going to import this index file inside of our app.js because app.js is the one that is uh, used throughout the site so it's global uh, i'm going to remove the global css we don't need it so we'll just say import one step out source styles and then index.scss and inside of this index i'm going to put the uh, tailwind i'm going to import the tailwind base components and utilities you can uh, so let's keep it index.css and i've imported that let's also create the tailwind config so in order for us to create the tailwind config either you can do it manually but it is recommended to use this uh, bash script uh, so if you paste this in the terminal and hit it and then it's going to create a file called tailwind config where the configuration of the tailwind stays so here it is uh, you need to add some of the purging features so i'm going to add that in fact i'm just going to copy the configuration from here so up until here this future part you can leave because 
this was before the latest version of the Tailwind came out, so we don't need that now. So I'll just go with this one. So I'll paste it like so, and then I'll just explain to you. So this purge means that uh, one of the benefits that Tailwind offers is that in case if a particular class is not used throughout your application, it's not going to output that. So I'm sure you'll agree that many times when we are checking the performance of our site, one part where we always get complaints is that some of the styles are unused. So to solve that problem, it purges the CSS. So it's going to go and look at the components directory and find and go ahead and check all the JavaScript files and see what classes have been used and what classes have been used under pages also. For example, index.js. And then it's going to uh, output the CSS, Tailwind CSS only for those classes so that we have uh, styles that we only need. We are not going to have extra styles. Okay. Awesome. So, and here we are just adding the uh, plugins, the Tailwind, CSS, pre-CSS, and auto prefixer. And then I guess that's about it. Uh, what we can do now is just do npm run dev. npm run dev. Okay, there you go. So we have welcome to Next.js. Okay, uh, one of the best places that I usually refer is Tailwind Cheat Sheet, where you can find all the Tailwind related classes. So let's apply a red color. So I'm going to say p tag inside of my index.js. And then I'll say hello. I'll give it a class. Oops. And then put this Tailwind class and see what happens. There you go. Congratulations. So you can see that the colors become red. And you can change it again to something else, maybe a green. Space that. And there you go. That's green. Awesome. And if you do an inspect element, you can see that Tailwind utility class is being applied. Uh, just for your information that in the development mode, it doesn't purge the CSS. The purge only happens when you run the build. So when you run the npm build, uh, yep, npm run build, then it's going to only output the CSS that's, that you have used, the classes that you have used, okay? So it's going to output the CSS for the classes that you have used. And I'm also going to show you that you can use the SAS as well. So as you can see, this is the .scss file, which is working great. I can say body, I can say h1, and I can say color. I can say this color, let's see what happens. So you can see that the color is changed now, yep. Which is great, perfect. So I'm gonna get rid of this style. So now that that has been taken care of, I'm, I'm usually not going to use a lot of style unless I have to override, for example, I have to override Gutenberg, CSS, etc. Only in that, in that case, I'll probably use uh, SAS, but in most cases, you'll find me using just the normal classes because that's the beauty of it. If you just use the classes, if you create component and if you want to remove that component, the CSS of that component goes away with it. You don't need to worry about checking the dependency it has on the styles in the style sheets. So uh, that's about it. I hope you did like the video. And if you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do start my repository to support my work. And do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed and my Twitter handle is my Twitter handle is Quarry Tech. Alright, so I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.